Hey, I'm Corwin, and today we're gonna to fix the brake lights on the Cadillac. So last time I took the car out, I had a weird intermittent brake light issue where um, it hit the blinker and it would work in the front, but then the back lights were kind of weird. So also the brake lights are pretty weak. Um, you know, there's no third brake light on this car and the brake lights in the blinkers are integrated. So um, I went to replace them with some brighter bulbs just, you know, for safety, if nothing else. Uh, but the sockets are so loose, um, you know, it's just standard 1157 for the brake light and then the reverse light is an 1156. But the springs for the contacts are corroded and worn out and so they're not pressing the pegs back up into the slots. Um, it's just jiggling around in there. Some of you may have seen I put up a uh, quick fix solution to that in by way of a short and um, a lot of people weren't happy about that. Today, I'm going to do it the right way, drop the bumper, and replace the sockets themselves. It doesn't look like a hard job, it just looks like kind of a time-consuming one, and uh, that bumper's pretty heavy, so it may get a little hairy, but we'll see. Disconnect negative battery cable, yeah, disconnect light assembly, three-way wire connector from rear body harness. All right, so behind the license plate, there's one here, and then there's one here, uh, those are the body harnesses for either side of the brake lights. So disconnect those and then the license plate lights, disconnect those on either side. I did this one already just to see what the hell I was doing. What the hell am I doing? And then we'll go to the next step. All right, so I'm actually gonna be replacing these bulbs uh, with some new ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop the whole assembly out, but, ouch, God. Don't worry, working in here inside this spring-loaded license plate is uh, so much fun. There's just a little tiny connector down in here. It's just got a little tab on it. You just pop it off. All this stuff's just so old. There are two tiny bolts that live up in the crevices of this piece. You can see them here and here. There's no way to see them. You just have to reach up in there and try to get them out. And you can see this is caked in dirt and grime. So I'm gonna clean this up when I replace the bulb, check the gasket, but yeah, this thing suck. All right, the book says to disconnect four plastic clips that hold the light assembly harness to the upper flange of the rear bumper. Obviously, I can't reach this way and I can't reach in from the top, so I'm just gonna see if I can see them from the bottom, but I have a really bad feeling I'm gonna break those clips. Okay, I see the clips, but the wire's not attached, so that makes me think someone's done this before. I'm not sure, but I'm not gonna mess with it. Okay, next thing is to loosen the rear bumper mounting bolts and pull the bumper away slightly to gain access to light assembly mounting nuts. All right, you say so. All right, it's gonna need a little uh, lubrication. I am prepared. Ah, dripped in my ear. Okay, everything's loose. Impact driver shook every single bit of dirt loose and now I'm covered in it and the mosquitoes will not leave me alone. Let me see if it's loose enough so I can pull the bumper like it says. Oh, God. That was disgusting. All right, there are bolts everywhere and they're all connected. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. I really don't want to drop the whole thing. I was hoping I could just shake it loose, but don't think I have a choice. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and take all those bolts out and see if I can't put this thing on the ground. Okay, I checked the other page in the book, and it says if you want to remove the bumper, there's actually two bolts up here at the top. So, um, and it also said to put down some jack stands, so I did that too. Hopefully it'll pop right out. So, at this point, I don't know. So behind this, what they call trim, really it's just cardboard. There is actually a hole cut out here to get to it, but I wanted to triple check, so. You can see there's one little guy back in there that seems to be holding this whole thing up. I think I'm just gonna leave it right there. I think I can get to all the light sockets that way and I should be able to just roll it back up into position and tighten some bolts, so. Okay, so I was able to get the whole fixture out. You can see there's two bolts that hold it to the bumper and then this is the reverse slide and these, this is the brake and the blinker. Now, what I don't know is how to get these sockets out. Okay, so here's the deal. This guy um, went all the way through, so whatever. I, I'm not sure about that guy. This guy here, I clipped off this plastic piece, which was, I think, what was gumming up the springs. And now, if I stick a bulb in here, it's, it's good. There's enough pressure on it. I think what happened, so this spring for this 1156 doesn't want to pop back out. I think what happened is that there's actually corrosion in this boot and it's like grabbing the wire and not letting the spring return. Let me see if I can just, something stinks. I don't know if it's me or if it's this old wire. Good God. Okay, come on out. It's this, this stinks. Okay, so I spent a good bit of time trying to get this new one to work. The problem is uh, this washer perches on a big spring, at, which is great because the spring has plenty of tension, but the way that it's constructed when it compresses, it doesn't allow enough room for to twist the bulb into the locking position. So this guy is the original spring um, that fits inside this little dude, and then, you know, it works as intended. This spring doesn't have the springiness anymore. So I guess I'm going to Elliot's. I was able to find a couple of springs that matched pretty close to uh, the one that was in there. I'll just need to trim them up and then, you know, make sure that I'm getting good, good contact. So pretty good. I'm actually not sure if I have a good ground here because the bumper's not super secure and attached, but I've got the light back in. The bulbs are both taut thanks to the springs now so i'm gonna go connect the battery and then i'll have to check the tape um, so you guys will know before me uh, if it works all right the reverse light doesn't want to work um i need to the reason why is because the outside collar that's supposed to be grounded um, is making contact with the wire. So I just need to figure out a way to isolate it um, so that, you know, obviously those two things are separate. Because right now it's just pushing 12 volts all the way around, there's no ground. So um, I'm gonna pop this back off and check that out and then I'll do the other side and we should be good to go. All right, uh, brake lights both on, reverse lights both on. 
Um, I had a, the reason, this one over here, this guy, I just had a bad ground. I don't know um, what the difference is, but for whatever reason, I just had a bad ground. I seem to have soldered enough of the socket to make it work, but uh, looks like I can put all this stuff back together and hopefully I don't get a ticket. I gotta tell you, that is not a fun job. I was filthy. It's done, I think it's okay. Obviously you saw like they look great, they're super bright. And that's really what I'm worried about. Like, God forbid I get rear-ended because, you know, brake lights out or whatever and nobody's paying attention. I swear everybody around here is on their phone anyway, so. Hopefully I never have to do it again. I just cannot express how important having one of these is. Like, if you don't have the book for an old car, you're you're just screwed. Like, there's forums out there and um, there are resources online and that's honestly what I'm, kind of what I'm trying to do here, but nothing replaces, you know, how they wrote it up originally, so. You gotta get one. I've got some really fun stuff coming up. In fact, it's kind of been in the background of some of these shots, so I'm really excited to get it on the car. But yeah, so until next time.